Hello and welcome to the newest edition of Pro Pharma Talks. My name is Alex Hernandez. Alongside me as always is Dr. Craig Stern. And today we're going to be talking about buying drugs from Canada. Doesn't that sound like fun? <laughs> so um, we're, we're going to, Dr. Stern is going to go over many of the different phases of how to buy drugs from Canada, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And how to get away with it as well. No, so, not how to get away <laughs> with it. Oh my God. Uh, I'll, I'll talk them into it. But anyways, um, first of all, you want to lay out why we chose this topic. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it's been in the media about the fact that uh, one of the senators went to um, Canada in order mm -hmm. to look at the cost of insulin in Canada versus the United States. And then the president has a plan for buying drugs from Canada and all the rest of that. So we thought it important to address this, not from a political stance, because this is not a political show, not from a uh, any other stance other than what is the data, what are the facts, what is the information so that people understand mm -hmm. what this is about, and then they can believe whatever they believe, but we're starting from a basis of facts. But why, why is this uh, an issue? Why, why do we have to go about buying drugs from Canada? Well, I mean, clearly drugs are cheaper in Canada because Canada puts a ceiling on the price of branded drugs in Canada, which we do not do in the United States. But uh, actually, M brought up a very important point, and that is Good job, we, we, we look at Canada because, in a general sense, Canadians look just like us. And to be fair, and in full disclosure, <laughs> my mother was born in Manitoba, so I'm half Canadian too. But Congratulations. The, thank you. But the <laughs> bottom line here is, is that you wouldn't say we go buy drugs from Mexico. You wouldn't say we go buy drugs from France, from England, from China, from Brazil, from South Africa. People don't say that. It's close, so there's a proximity issue, and mm -hmm. as a result of that, people are talking about buying drugs from Canada. By the way, <laughs> no one has asked Canada. No. <laughs> so Canada is not aware of this at all. Canada is aware of it, but no one asked their, no one asked permission. their permission. No one asked for some sort of a plan that Canadians could agree to. This is all a group of people who didn't have a plan, who did something that they think is intuitively a good idea, and it makes sense intuitively, mm -hmm. to just go and do something. Unfortunately, when you do a plan, you have to understand what the other side wants to do, right. what you want to do. There's going to have to be some kind of deal. In place. There has to be some deal. I mean, otherwise they'll just build a wall. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, what, what, when they say let's go buy drugs from Canada, what differences are there between U.S. version of manufactured drugs and Canadian version of manufactured drugs? Right. Is right. there a difference? Well, bottom line here is Canada has something called Health Canada, which is like the Food and Drug Administration or the FDA in the United States. Mm -hmm. They're very comparable. The kind of regulations, the kind of safety, the kind of regulations that they use for effectiveness um, are generally the same. So when you're looking at the oversight that goes on mm -hmm. between Health Canada and the FD, uh, F, uh, FDA, you're looking at effectively the same thing. So quality is there. However, uh, the fundamental issue is that there is a regulation that, that Canada uses, not unlike what we have in the United States. So there is a commonality here for what goes on. The problem is, is that most drugs that are in Canada or, or dispensed in Canada are not made in Canada. They're made in other countries and they are brought into Canada from other countries. So Health Canada so has to... the U.S.? Uh, yes, it can come from the U.S. Uh, it can come from Europe. Um, if you want benzodiazepines, they come from Italy. If you want the greatest source of generic raw materials, it comes from Israel. If you want the greatest source of brand raw materials, it comes from India. This is true all over the world. But the drugs, the uh, Canada doesn't have a huge drug manufacturing uh, industry. Mm -hmm. So part of the problem that Canada has, and this is a Canadian problem, not, not a U.S. problem, is that they have to ensure the efficacy, the effectiveness, and the safety of these drugs that are manufactured outside of Canada. By the way, 
by major manufacturers. So, um, you know, Merck, Pfizer, Lilly, all of these other uh, companies are manufacturing these drugs and these drugs that come to Canada are from major manufacturers. So that's not the problem. And they so, have a regulation that's the same, right. but they're not necessarily made in Canada. And you you mentioned that Canada has a ceiling on brand drug prices, right? Right. So could that be one of the major things that kept Canada from having their own manufacturers within their country? Well, people have argued that. They have argued that um, there's not enough money for a manufacturer to be making it in Canada. So as a result of that, innovation has uh, not happened. Mm -hmm. Part of that argument is the same that manufacturers have used uh, for the United States, and that is if you lower the cost of drugs, there won't be enough money available to make new drugs. And so as a result of that, you'll be killing the innovation that goes on. The problem with that argument is, is that, as I've indicated, um, the raw materials for branded products is in India. It's not in the United States. Right. The raw materials for generics are in, in Israel, not in the United States. Raw materials and the actual product of benzodiazepines right, um, Italy. is yeah. in Italy. It's not in the United States. So the argument that you're killing innovation, the main uh, third third world country market is in Brazil, South Africa, uh, in some areas of China, India. So you're hmm. you're you're trying to make a general statement that is right. not true, because drugs are being made everywhere. Right. There are certainly uh, production problems, quality problems, and those are the same kind of things that we saw. Um, after World War II with uh, Japan, where quality was poor, and then they improved quality and effectively took the entire market for technology and a host of other things. Same thing is true in the developing world with uh, China and right. India and everywhere else. So, And they also have the argument of a lot of brand manufacturers are talk using R&D as a reason for the high price of their drug, yes. when in fact R&D... Well, not all, not for all drugs, but most R and D is was government funded, right? That's the a good, argument. A good deal, a good deal, a good deal right. of new drugs was found in either government laboratories, nat uh, the National Health uh, Association, or mm -hmm. money that they gave to universities right. in order to develop, and that's part of it. Not all yeah. of it. But it's part of it. And that's a topic of another conversation. It is. A topic and we, we've of talked about that before as well. Yeah. You can look back in our archive and, and um, in our list of podcast episodes to see that discussion. But you want to talk about availability of prescription drugs, especially when yeah. it comes to U.S., because we know U.S. is probably the largest user of prescription medication. It certainly is. World. It certainly is. And when you look at the United States, by the way, mm -hmm. there's different utilization by state. Right. The largest utilizer of drugs in the country is Tennessee. Wow, um, And so, um, d depending on which state, there is relatively greater numbers of prescriptions used um, uh, by one state and another. But the fundamental thing that we need to address here is right now, and we'll talk more about what's going on in the United States, the Canadian um, rule of law, the Canadian law, has it where uh, today uh, can, uh, uh, Canadian pharmacies get prescriptions from Americans who go across the border to Canada, go to a Canadian pharmacy, and ask for a prescription. By Canadian law, mm -hmm. that prescription must be co-signed by a Canadian physician. Right. So even though you may have seen the doctor in the United States, the prescription may have been written by the doctor in the United States. The patient who takes that prescription is going to go to Canada, and the Canadian pharmacy cannot fill it mm. without a Canadian doctor reviewing it, signing off on it in order to allow them to do it. That's Canadian law, not U.S. law. Right. And, to be fair, um, if someone goes to the hospital... Canadians get drugs for free um, if they're in the hospital. Um, if 
if someone is um, not a Canadian citizen, then it's a different story if they go into the hospital for whatever. But the the main thing that we need to address here is is that um, if, if the, this is Canadian law, not U.S. law. So right. we can say that people are going to go across and do it. Now we're going to create a whole issue for Canadian physicians who, of course, will want to be paid for dealing with co-signing all these prescriptions. So there's going to be an additional cost for the prescription mm -hmm. to do that. And finally is a fear. Now, whether it's true or not, no one knows right now. But the fear is, is that uh, manufacturers will look at this and say, we're going to raise the price on Canadian drugs. We will then equal American prices, uh, U.S. prices, so that whether you go to Canada or whether you go to the U.S., you'll be paying a, the same price. Whether that happens or not, it's not clear. That it has to be approved by Canadian government. It has to be approved by the Canadian the government. The Canadian government will, they already put a ceiling on it, a cap. They did. Yeah. They put a ceiling on brand drugs so that you can only charge so much for a brand drug. Now, uh, we'll talk about um, the, the, uh, the Trump plan and other plans about what they're doing mm -hmm. because there are some exclusions to that. Big exclusions. Wow. But either way, we need to be aware of that. Specialty drugs, biologics, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, well, let's talk about some of that cost consideration since we already went into it. Um, Canada, they have the most prescription drugs that are imported. Or, they, is that true? Is that, well, it's yeah. not that they have the most. I mean, mm -hmm. there are countries in Europe and otherwise that are importing drugs. Right. And certainly in South America, they're importing drugs. Other parts of Europe, they're importing drugs. In Africa, they're importing drugs. The the important issue for us is is that the majority of drugs that are being dispensed, oh, okay. sold in Canada, were not manufactured in Canada. Right. Not bad. Nobody's arguing that that's a good thing or a bad thing. That's not the issue. The issue is is that they come from other sources. Right. Which, by the way. If one goes to a Canadian pharmacy, then you're go it's it's pretty much the same as if you went to a U.S. pharmacy. Right. But and and um, uh, Walgreens and Boots, which is a huge uh, U.K. Uh, uh, pharmacy group, etc., have oh, an alliance. Boots. Boots. B o o t s. Wow. So they formed an alliance. It's or? it's international in that regard yeah. i'm sorry what? is it an acronym for something no it's not an acronym it's, it's the name very, of it it's the name of it very but silly. if you go to a a internet pharmacy on the other hand then it's not controlled necessarily then there can be problems and you can be getting uh drugs that are uh, not what you think they are they mm -hmm. can be fake drugs what they is can this be, what is the internet pharmacy is it just like a like amazon you log on you Say you got a prescription for this much, you need this much, and can you ship it to me? Yeah, well, right now, Amazon doesn't have a pharmacy. Clearly, you could go... Amazon-like. But, but you, yeah, Amazon-like. You could go to a pharmacy, uh, Canada RX or, or whatever, Okay. and you could say, I want a drug. It, it was, by the way, very big for erectile dysfunction drugs. So everybody was going for Viagra and Cialis, and drugs like that. With good reason, of course. Of course, with good reason. <laughs> but the problem is, is that when they did that, they didn't know whether they really got true Viagra mm. or not. And in effect, when the studies have been done, uh, and it's been, it's been addressed by the FDA in the United States, by um, uh, Health Canada in Canada and everywhere else, that these uh, internet pharmacies are frequently not legitimate. There are some that are. There's a listing of them that's available to identify those that are real, not fake, not just put up there because they would sell anything out of a bathtub. But right. in this regard, no to internet pharmacies, yes to brick and mortar pharmacies that look a lot like what we have here. Yeah, that's pretty scary when you think about it. You it is. When you're you're buying a drug that you say, that you think you need, and you don't know what you're putting in your body. That's right. Hopefully, it's just sugar. Hopefully, <laughs> yeah, we can <laughs> hope so. Um, but to take a 
to take your argument a little bit further, mm -hmm. we've said that Canada puts a ceiling on brand drug prices. That ceiling can be significant. For example, we found that um, Abilify, uh, which is a drug uh, for uh, psychosis, costs about 87% less yeah. in Canada. Uh, Xarelto, which is a drug to uh, deal with uh, blood clots and the rest to protect people, um, it costs 60% less. So savings are significant. And it's true in many European countries uh, as well, um, and that is they put a ceiling on how much they will pay based on value. The United States does not have a system where we approve a drug based on its value for what it does. Other countries, on the other hand, like the United Kingdom, has something called NICE, um, N-I-C-E, um, uh, Canada, something similar. Other countries do something similar where they are looking at the drug, defining what they think the value is of that drug mm -hmm. and putting a ceiling of price on it based on what they see it as a valuable cost, a, a cost efficient um, quantity. Um, in the United States, we don't do that. Uh, we approve it, but we don't approve it based on cost. There are certainly movements in the United States uh, like ICER and other groups that are not for profit that are looking at value trying to make decisions but it's not like the United Kingdom it's not like Australia it's not like Canada it's not like other countries that say we will only approve it if we can validate that the value of the drug is equivalent to the price of the drug right it's an interesting thought it's an interesting part of the getting qualified process yes getting a drug across it, it you really think about it and, and you think about why wouldn't it be that way well because um i mean you got to think about the people that are actually going to be needing it but then you also got to think about <laughs> if they need it and you didn't approve it based on its cost but you did approve it on it on its efficacy there's kind of a a, a Blurred line there. There is a blurred line, yeah. and we've talked about this extensively, mm -hmm. um, and including in a bunch of our analyses, and that is the gap between the cost of a medicine and the affordability of a medicine is widening. Right. Um, and so it may be that you can validate that it's worth a given cost, but it may not be affordable for that. Mm -hmm. So, for example, there are drugs now that cost eighty four eighty five thousand dollars average income in the united states is fifty nine thousand dollars how are they going to pay for an eighty four thousand dollar drug they're going to have to look into it they're going to have to deal with it potentially the same way they buy a house or a car or something and if the drug is a million dollars or a new drug so guess my, uh, that costs two million dollars or more mm -hmm. then um, it may stop people from being able to get the drug because there's no way that they could afford it no matter what they did. There'll be more job it. openings available because there'll be more lenders now. <laughs> there'll be more lenders. <laughs> yeah. um, it is important, though, um, um, that notion of uh, going from the United States to a cheaper place to buy drugs right. um, is not new. Um, uh, Florida and Vermont already have state rules for doing that. Um, it's certainly being mm. evaluated in multiple other states. So To bar um, them from going from state to state? Or no, that they could go to go Canada to, yeah. to buy drugs because today you're limited with how many units of a prescription drug you can get. And if you bring more in, then you're subject to major fines, etc., for doing so. Right. Um, they've, uh, they've allowed it through their particular states. It's also very true on the southern border. We're in California. Uh, it's very true that people will go to Mexico to buy drugs that are made by major manufacturers in order to yeah. deal with it. So it happens. Um, it surgery certainly happens on the border. Uh, yeah, it does. <laughs> and there's also surgeries in Thailand. So, you know, I mean, we're dealing with people who are it's trained in the United States, have, um, uh, have very good clinics and and, uh, and um, surgical suites etc yeah. were trained bottom line for us is is that 
it's intuitively clear but at the same time you can't just say oh everybody go to canada to buy drugs yeah. or even mexico or anybody or mexico. else yeah. because bottom line is nobody's asked whether canada approves of this plan plus um, if you go to mexico you probably can't read the label <laughs> nine times out of ten <laughs> Well, can. even if, even if you can't, you can identify what the drug is, yeah. identify with a with a um, Mexican pharmacist what the drug is, mm -hmm. or you can see it in the generic name and you can see if it's the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Here, take two of these. It's okay. a mess. Just take it. Well, <laughs> which obviously brings us to yeah. what's the Trump plan and what are the arguments? What is the it? Trump plan? And this is the first I'm hearing that Trump has a plan. <laughs> Sorry, well, they, I'm not trying to get political. They, they have submitted it. Um, what they've said is states, individual pharmacies, and wholesalers can write proposals, submit them to the federal government for approval. So this is not like they've turned it on and everybody goes rushing over. They have to have a plan. They have to get it approved. It's not quite clear what the approval criteria are. Shocking. Um, but it is important to identify that the providers of drugs, pharmacies, states, wholesalers can do that. They did exclude biologics, medications that are created from living organisms. Within a year or two, half of the drug market is going to be biologics. Yeah. And so that's a huge exclusion. It's not one or two percent mm -hmm. of the entire market. We're talking about a huge ex uh, exclusion of a major part of the market. So now drugs for cancer and rheumatoid arthritis and MS uh, and other uh, hepatitis C and HIV, etc. There are drugs that um, become a problem um, because they're they're a part of the exclusion. So you're saying that Trump's plan is for everybody else to have their own plan. <laughs> well. Um, if, if, if you go to Canada, <laughs> you're going to have to get Canadian, yeah. which I'll talk about in a moment, about what they want. Okay. The bottom line is, is that the last point in, in the Trump plan is, is that the FDA would work with manufacturers to bring drugs made in foreign factories to the U.S., with the idea being if the drug is being sold in, in cheaper in France or Germany or, or Sweden or, or Norway or whatever, or Canada to bring those drugs to the United States and allow um, patients in the United States to pay a lower price. That's the good news. Do they have to pay for shipping? <laughs> well, that would depend. That would depend on pharmacies, wholesalers, what they pay and what those deals are. And the right? PBM in the middle. And well, <laughs> and you have to you have to be able to um, confirm the provenance or the the origin of the drugs. Right. You can't just Take something in a bottle and say, okay, this is the drug because it's labeled that way. Because yeah. you don't know if, in fact, it is. So you do have to confirm all of those things to do it. Right. Now, having said that, um, uh, the Pharmaceutical Manufacturers Association, uh, Canadian Pharmacists Association, and others all have arguments against it. The first one is they're worried about counterfeit and dangerous medications, of which course. could happen. Everybody has to be aware of that um, because you don't want to buy a drug that you think is insulin, inject it thinking it's controlling your blood sugar, and then find out it's not insulin. Um, that's number one. Number well, yeah, two, but I mean, with anything, um, with anything you import that's goods for, say, it's just something you're going to eat, they have to test it. Well, and it has to and be that's part of the problem. It has to be that's part of the problem. Yeah. Okay. And obviously that adds cost. Right. The second part is is that the Canadian drug market is small in comparison to the U.S. drug market. The total population of Canada versus the population of the United States um, is small to to large. Uh, population of the United States about 329 million. Um, you look at what's going on in Canada. I don't know the exact uh, number right now, but it's mm -hmm. significantly smaller than that. So the total number of population, the total number of people who use medications, etc., is small. Well, it is the, crowded down here. I wouldn't <laughs> mind if a couple of them went up there. <laughs> oh God. Um, uh, the third is, is yeah, you are. <laughs> um, the third is is that the Canadians don't have an unlimited supply of drugs. Um, mm -hmm. 
they have shortages like we do. And because they're a smaller uh, country with a smaller inventory, uh, a shortage hits them perhaps harder. equal or harder than it does us. They have a, a program, there's a website uh, called Drug Shortages Canada where they publish and all manufacturers must inform them mm -hmm. uh, if they don't have it. So the supply can be a, a problem. And finally, the Canadian Pharmacists Association up, totally opposes um, the plan, the Trump plan, because um, they see it as an invasion of their practice, that it's going to interfere with their practice, potentially take drugs away that they would be dispensing to Canadian um, uh, population, etc. So there's a pro and con going on in both sides. Most importantly, the United States presumes that kind of um, arrogantly so we can say, go send people over to a, a <laughs> cheaper area. Yeah. Uh, Emma's right, by the way. They didn't say go to Mexico and buy, buy drugs. They said go to Canada. Well, but we're, either we're way, still trying to build that wall. Yeah, so. exactly. Um, but Working. bottom line here... Time, thank you. <laughs> uh, but bottom line here, you are getting into trouble. Um, <laughs> this is a non-political show. The, 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 what, we're, what we're trying to do to make sure here is uh -huh. that... Um, you can't just do this on your own. You've got to get permissions. You have to work out deals with the country that you're going to. If it's one person for one prescription, then it really doesn't make an issue. Right. But when you've got a, a coda that comes from a particular a whole country mm -hmm. to go, then you have to work things out uh, if possible or otherwise. And at least the current indications from Canada is that they're totally opposed to the whole program. And so you can legislate, but you can't make Canada do what you want them to do. They're a separate country. They make yeah. up their own mind about what they want. Well, who says we can't do what we want to do? <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, you can see how nervous they get because they know, they already know how much we as Americans use prescription drugs. They already know that the reason for our drug shortage is different for their reason for their drug shortage. They get less or import less or bring in less. We try to get more and people still want to get more or people need more. There's a there's a lot of issues with that because if you just if you're flooding Canada, especially on the online market, there's going to be shortages all over the place. There could very well be. And um I, I think the major argument that people need to consider here is it's very clear that if you go to another country, the drugs cost less. The argument in the United States has been, no, the United States is subsidizing innovation in order to find new drugs that are, are preventive, are curative, etc. Um, a good deal of that has to deal with sunk costs that they've used in coming up with the drugs that didn't work to right. the drugs that did. That's an economic argument. But the other part of it is is that there's a reason why other countries have cheaper costs. One of those is they put a ceiling on the cost of the drug. The other part of it is is that there's a hidden problem that is beginning to explode, and that is um, the, uh, when they exclude issues like biologics, and uh, drugs that are, um, are the new biotechnology drugs, they're going to exclude a half of the market. So the problem in cost doesn't go away because a branded, average cost of a branded drug may be somewhere around $135, $150 a month. <laughs> the average cost of a specialty drug is about $1,500 a dose. So you're you're uh, trying to get a cost control on one while you're dealing with a significant burgeoning cost on the other. And, Doesn't solve and all problems. the growing list of biologics that are coming on the They market. are growing. Obviously, we do it yes. through our different analyses. I've never seen so many specialties than I have seen this year. Yes, they're huge. Last year, it was, it was starting to rise, but towards the end of last year and this year, it just... The amount of specialty drugs is shocking. It's it's huge. It's yeah. huge. It's huge and costs a lot of money. They do. Yeah. They do.
So, um, specialty <laughs> drug financing is coming on the market pretty soon, right, Craig? Or do what? <laughs> specialty drug financing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is that's a major problem. I and that's be a surprised. topic I for a totally be different uh, subject uh, discussion. Yes. Um, anything else you'd like to add before we go? No, I think that uh, we we need to think about something that intuitively makes sense for whether it can be done. Mm -hmm. Clearly, you need to have a plan. You can't just throw things out and say, oh, I'm going to go wherever it's cheaper. You have to have a plan because not only are you influencing U.S. people, you're influencing, in this case, Canadian people and other people. So you've, right. got, to, you've got to work this out. Plans are important. Doing something intuitively makes sense, but it doesn't solve the problem, and that's what we have to do here. If intuition and plan equals something that makes sense, then yes, for sure. Right. If it's just intuition, but there's no plan, that's a, a coda for a disaster. Right, right. So, and you can't have a plan to say, everybody else come up with your own plan. No, that's crazy. That's, that's crazy. That's crazy. So policy is important, and also the price of drugs and the rising price of drugs is still a problem. It's going to continue to be a problem until we actually do something about it or actually come up with was the word of the day? Plan, right? <laughs> yeah, it is. I mean, clearly, uh, Pro Pharma um, uh, has tools that um, different uh, clients use all the time, and others use all the time. To help manage, but cost, you're not yeah. to manage cost and deal with it. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you're right. I mean, this this is not going to go away. It's not going to go away. Well, that's uh, on that happy note. That's it for today's show. Um, thank you again, Dr. Craig Stern. I hope you guys learned something at home. If you did, please feel free to tell us. Give us some feedback. Let us know how we're doing. If you have any questions, comments, please leave a message. You can leave them down below. All right. We're still putting this on YouTube? Yes, on YouTube. Thank you, man. That was very, uh, that was a lot of energy coming out from you. Good job. Anyways, that was, <laughs> that's it for our show. We'll be here again next week with a new topic, new discussion. And uh, please visit ProPharmaConsultants.com. We have a free information page called RxInfoX. Um, on there, you'll find various healthcare articles that might suit your needs. And we also have a little drug ticker with updated drug prices about acquisition cost of drugs. Right? Yes, we do. Yes, yes. we do. Yes. And um, that's and it. You, for today. And, and you set it up. I was waiting for that. I love getting credit. <laughs> a little pat on the back for that. <laughs> so anyways, we'll see you guys next week.